Good morning, fellow primates. I'm John Gonzalez. Thank you for joining me today. If you are planning a trip to India anytime soon, you've come to the right place. But before you go, here's some practical travel tips I'd like to share with you first. Among the 30 plus countries across six continents that I've visited, my favorite place to visit is India. If you've never been to India before, you're probably going to experience some culture shock on your very first trip. So I'd like to share with you some of my experiences to help you enjoy this wonderful country. This episode is part one and we'll discuss practical tips. Next week will be part two and it'll be a sightseeing guide to the city. Number one is packing. Bring conservative clothing and sandals or flip-flops for all the holy sites and temples you're going to visit. You're going to take your shoes on and off a lot. By conservative, I mean cover your head, shoulders, and knees. It can get hotter than 100 degrees in India, so I recommend loose cotton clothing. Bring sunscreen, sunglasses, and a hat, mosquito repellent, Pepto, just in case you get stomach problems, and plug adapters for electronic devices. If you're staying in budget accommodations, consider bringing toilet paper, a travel towel, and a sleeping sheet. And most importantly, come to India with an open mind. Number two is passport. U.S. citizens need their passports valid for six months, plus two blank pages and a visa prior to arriving in India. The e-tourist visa process is done online, but it's a little bit confusing. They'll ask you to upload a headshot in JPEG format and a copy of your passport in PDF format. It's $60 to apply online for the single entry visa, non-refundable. In a few days, they'll send you an email entitled Status Regarding E-Tourist Visa. It should say Application Status Granted. Bring a printout of this email and your passport everywhere with you in India, preferably in a money belt. No vaccinations are required to enter unless you've been to a yellow fever stricken country six days prior to arrival. When you arrive, note that the e-tourist visa line is at the very far end of the passport control area. Number three is language. The main language in India is Hindi, but there are 14 other languages spoken as well, including English. Note that Hindi refers to the language while Hindu refers to the religion. As a former British colony, Indians drink tea and speak English very well. But consider bringing a phrase book like this and memorize at least 10 phrases before you go. Yes, no, hello, please, thank you, toilet, how much, etc. Number four is money. One US dollar is approximately 55 Indian rupees. To avoid credit card fraud, use cash and carry small bills. 500 rupee bills cannot always be easily broken. Coins are pretty useless even for tipping or bakshish. Tip with small bills instead. A bottle of water costs about 50 rupees. Budget-wise, India is a very inexpensive country to travel in, which is one reason I love it. For daily expenses like meals, admission, and transportation, you can get by on $20 a day. For fast price conversion, I like to just write down on a piece of paper, US dollars converted into rupees in $5 to $10 increments. Number five is time. Sites are generally open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., or sometimes more vaguely from dawn till dusk. Note that trains run a little bit late here, and things go a little bit slower due to the culture, traffic, and the heat. They also use both the AM, PM, and the 24-hour clock in India. Number six is safety. India generally feels safe in the daytime in well-populated areas. But it gets really dark after sundown because of a shocking absence of street lights. The only light sources at night are vehicle headlights and roadside shops. Beware of stray dogs and roaming cows, and be careful when crossing the street even though drivers there are used to dodging pedestrians. Wear a money belt, which goes inside your trousers by the way, not outside, it's not a fanny pack. You'll need to carry your passport around for various reasons, like if policemen ask or if you're exchanging currency. Number seven is restrooms. Ask for the toilet or the WC. Sometimes some places will ask you for small bills, 10 to 20 rupees is not unusual, so hang on to these small bills here. One fascinating thing you will see in India is the squat style toilet versus the sitting toilet we use in the West. Many Asian countries like India favor the squat style, which unkinks your colon and facilitates the natural process. Number eight is hotel. I like to stay in the Connaught Place, Pahar Ganj, or the New Delhi train station areas. They have a lot of tourist services like restaurants, coffee shops, and stores. Make sure that your hotel 
has a working air conditioner in the room they have for you. Find out if internet is included, as sometimes it's separate. Breakfast almost always is a separate cost. Get some hotel business cards like this. It should have the address of your hotel on it. That way, at the end of a sightseeing day, all you gotta do is jump into a taxi and give them the business card with the address, and it'll take you home safe and sound. Number nine is transportation. From the airport, you can take a prepaid taxi into the city at a fixed rate of 500 rupees. Look for the prepaid taxi booth outside the arrivals area, Middle Island. Find out if your hotel can pick you up at the airport instead to save you 500 rupees. Rule number one is negotiate the price before you get into a taxi. Meters are not used here. My preferred method of transport in India are the motorcycle taxis at 20 to 300 rupees per ride, available at all hours of the day. The only downside is your exposure to loud honking and pollution. Bicycle taxis are best for navigating through Old Delhi's tight spaces and outdoor markets. The Delhi subway is another viable option, but it can get really crowded, and I prefer to see the city above ground. Number 10 is food. I feel that the fear of food illness or deli belly is wildly overhyped. I've personally never had a food illness in India. Indian cuisine is very flavorful and a vegetarian's paradise. The most commonly available meats in India are generally chicken and lamb. Do not ask for beef or pork in India. Avoid drinking tap water and ice since it's usually made from tap water and be wary of poorly washed utensils and glasses. Number 11 is admission fees. There is a large disparity in admission fee prices, ranging from 20 rupees for Indian residents to 750 rupees for foreigners. Also, there's usually a separate ticket line and a 25 rupee fee required for large cameras like DSLRs and camcorders. Most sites do not allow tripods, lights, or external microphones, and mosques are closed to non-Muslims during prayer times, which occur five times a day. Number 12 is shopping. India excels at textiles and clothing, but make sure you check the quality of the goods carefully before you buy. Connaught Place, or CP, is a great central area of the city for shopping. With regard to haggling, keep your currency conversion price list handy, and remember to seem only casually interested in the item you're buying. It's okay to accept beverages if they offer it and not buy anything. They're just being hospitable, it's the culture. Haggling is a social activity in this part of the world and should never get heated or argumentative. Number 13 is scams. Don't believe anyone who tells you that your hotel or a site is closed, burned down, or no good. They're probably just a tout that's trying to redirect you to another hotel or to a fake tourist office or a souvenir shop. Don't listen to them. Even if your taxi driver tells you this, insist that it's okay and that you still want to go. At mosques, when you remove your shoes at the entrance, you can get extorted for a hefty fee just to get your shoes back. This can be avoided by removing your footwear and tossing it in your bag or backpack before you enter. But in mandirs or Hindu temples, I find that the locker and keys they provide are safe and secure. At all the tourist sites, people will sometimes offer to be your guide for free or cheap, but it's never either. Number 14 is photos and video. Avoid taking photos and video of police, soldiers, military checkpoints, and women. But boys and men are happy to take their picture with you if you're friendly. I'm always delighted by how wonderfully curious people are about me and where I'm from. Of all the things I love about India, it's the good-hearted nature of her people that I love the most. I'm John Gonzalez, thank you for watching. Coming up next week will be Delhi India Part 2, my sightseeing guide to the city. Please click subscribe if you'd like to encourage me to make more videos like this. Feel free to ask me a question or comment, I am grateful. Remember to enjoy your life, it's the only one you have.